yeah we are live now all right thank you everyone for joining us today uh, for a session early morning here in india i know there are a lot of people joining across the globe and uh, it's uh, very late for some of you especially for our presenters today uh, mike ranolds and kamruz jaman right they are uh, presenting it from us as well as canada simultaneously so thank you guys thank you so much for sparing your valuable time today and uh, giving us the opportunity to hear you guys today. Uh, I'll quickly introduce both of our guest speakers today, uh, Mike Reynolds, uh, also known as Sidecore Junkie, the wizard, the Sidecore wizard, uh, or you can just call him Mike, right? He's a Sidecore MVP from last five years, over 12 years of Sidecore architecture and development experience. And he has a proven uh, track record of uh, pushing the envelope of the Sidecore experience platform to deliver best of the breed solutions for the clients. Who wrote uh, that? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't write that. But. Yeah. OK. Uh, a well-known thought leader in the Sitecore community, Reynolds was recognized as Sitecore Technology MVP from 2014 to 2018 for his community contribution. And uh, I'm sure every one of us follows him on Twitter as well as LinkedIn. So that's about uh, Mike Reynolds. Um, uh, we also have Kamruz. Uh, and uh, Kamruz has over 10 years of uh, development experience for building dynamically driven web-based and desktop application. He has an experience of full project life cycle from feasibility analysis, development, and deep management to handover, including per preparation of specification, budgets, and project plan, as well as the formal documentation and the client relation during the projects. Kamroon is a highly skilled uh, front-end design and browser manipulation using advanced HTML, CSS, JavaScript techniques. Uh, He's working on different uh, development methodologies, including waterfall agile and uh, making use of scrum storyboarding and sprint techniques. Um, I'm sure you all already know Kamruz, and you can also follow him on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, and I welcome again both of them. And I'll hand it over uh, the session or the presentation rights to Mike and Kamruz so that they can start their wonderful session on Sitecore forms, experience forms today. Thank you, guys. And over to you. Thank you for having us. You just went mute, Kimrose. Was I mute? Yeah, but well, now I can hear you. <laughs> You're confusing me now, Mike. There's, there's like a buzz and reverberation sound, but. Anyways, go, yeah, just start. All right, let me know when you can uh, see my screen. Yep, I can see it. All right, so we're here to talk about uh, Cycle Experience Forms. I'm sure everybody has touched web forms for marketers at one point in their life. I know I've touched it more than once, and we're going to start from a little bit of history, but let's talk about us for a second. Next slide. Next slide, next slide. All right, so, oh, no, no, stop. All right, so who are we? I mean, well, we just got a very gracious uh, introduction already, but I'm Mike Reynolds. I am known in the community as a psycho junkie, psycho wizard, and all kinds of other weird stuff. Um, been an MVP for five years. I love to share what I know and what I can. Just And also, I learn a lot from you guys when you guys talk to me. Uh, I am co-presenting with my buddy and friend hiding out in Canada. Like, British man in Canada named Kim Roos German. Everybody knows who Kim is, but we're better known as, next slide, the, the trolls. <laughs> so you probably have seen us on the Psycho Slack where we might make a little pun here or there and you know do a little trolling and whatever. And the reason behind that madness is that get a little laugh out of you because when you have a laugh around something and you're learning something, you'll tend to retain that information a lot better. I studied not only computer science, but psychology, and that's what I learned in one of my classes. So that's why we do it. Next slide. So when it, here's the dream. You log into Sitecore, let's say you're a content author, you're not very technical, and you just want to like create a form, drag and drop, do all kinds of crazy stuff. Wouldn't that be awesome? Next slide. All right. So we. So let me talk, let me talk, talk a little bit of history because uh, I think it's quite interesting to talk about the history of uh, web forms and architecture, particularly. 
Uh, Web Quantum Marketers was, was initially released way back in uh, October 2009, and it's been supported since the very first release of uh, Cycle 6.0. It's always been a separately installable mod module. You know, you download the package and use the package manager and you can install it and attach your databases and you're kind of good to go. The, so here, here's, here's the downside of having this separate installable module. Cycle 7 was released in May of 2013. And then cycle 7.2 was released in April of 2014. So that's just under a, just under a year, just under a year between those two jumps of uh, releases. But MVC support for web form to marketers wasn't added until September 2014, which is a whole year and a half after the initial release of cycle seven, which had the full support of MVC. Um, but Web Forms and Marketers was, it was a huge, it still is a huge, hugely popular module, probably one of the most popular modules that was installed with, uh, with Cycle. So people, like I know myself, and I think Mike, Mike is the same here, we, we were just waiting essentially for Web Forms and Marketers to be released before we could move a lot of our projects onto uh, right. full MVC projects, or we were having to use these workarounds which kind of worked but they were not great you know where we were mixing and matching mvc with uh, web forms and marketers uh, with web forms to try and make this work the other problem with uh, web forms and marketers has been for a very very long time it's been a module which is uh, just kept on giving us these little gifts that nobody really wants the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The, I don't know how many, I, I think most of my bug reports I've read. And you, you, you fix a bug and then like two, one or two releases later, you'd get this bug just reappear and you're like, why this, you know, this, this, how come this same bug has just reappeared? And it's just one of these mysteries of the universe, unfortunately. Right. So the good news is uh, web forms for marketers is is can be laid to bed almost almost. Um, cycle nine introduces uh, a brand new uh, it's not a module, but it's not exactly a module, but it's brand new forms uh, component. So you're you're trapping in and out. You're trapping in and out. Just to so let you know. Cycle nine, uh, with cycle nine, there's a brand new uh, forms module. It's it's brand new, it's built from the ground up. It's it's not a web forms and marketers nine. It's uh, although there is a web forms and marketers nine, this is a brand new module built from the ground up from scratch. Uh, as a result, it is MVC only, so it will not not support web forms, uh, ASP.NET web forms. They've got a brand new. Uh, Drag and drop UI. It's a very modern, slick drag and drop UI uh, based on Bootstrap. Uh, but you know, the front end can be anything. Uh, we've got support for multi page forms, which allows us to do a uh, wizards. Uh, so you can have stepped forms. And it's part of the core platform. And um, what this means is as soon as you install Cycle 9, you get web forms, and, uh, well, forms installed as well. The documentation is really, really good. Like straight out the bat since uh, last year, since its initial release, the documentation was very good. And it's just been getting better and better with uh, useful examples of how to actually build build stuff, useful stuff like you know, fields and validators and submit actions and stuff. Uh, we'll go into a bit of the back end later, but uh, everything is now an item. And uh, it means that the structure of uh, the forms is a lot, lot more clean in in this version compared to the old web forms or uh, marketers um, version. And uh, it works in CMS only mode, and you can you can you can have localization in the form. 
mentioned the uh, drag and drop UI. We can, I don't think we can hear you. At least I can't. Guys over in uh, New Delhi, hear me okay? Uh, so, Cameron, your voice is breaking up in between. Uh, I yeah. Think it's, it's, uh, we could and, hear the last sentence, but uh, in between it was breaking. And it's okay. This is my slide, by the way. <laughs> yeah, all right so all right so this week so in the new experience forms we have a uh, form builder and it's, it gives you a nice drag and drop uh i would say uh feature set or whatever you want to call it where you can drag things over from a panel on the right hand side into a pane in the middle and it will just you can drag different field types that are given to you out of the box uh we're going to show an example of this uh during the presentation just took a screenshot just to show you Next slide. So here's something really cool about this, is you can do some performance tracking, not only at a field level, but also at the aggregate form level. So you can see how fields are doing or your entire form is doing, uh, you know, over a given set of time while, while it's live. So if, let's say a field isn't really working out, you may wanna like just have a look at it and maybe you can change it and then replace it with something different. By the way, you can turn this on and off um, I think out of the box it's on, if I remember right, but you can easily just shut it off for each like different part. Next slide. And we are now back to SQL Server. So at one point in time when we were web forms and marketers, it was all SQL Server, then we went to MongoDB, then we went to a choice, then we went back to um, SQL Server. Mike, just one, uh, one request, because when you are speaking, the slides are getting minimized and your camera is uh, visible. Right. Oh, because I'm not running the slides, so. Okay. Well. Um, that's the, probably the reason why. Sure. Um, I don't know if I can control that. Um, I think you could shut your camera off, maybe. Yeah, let me try that. Uh, how's that? But it's going to bounce over to me, though. So uh, is, uh, I guess we can make Camrose as the presenter so that uh, everyone can see his screen and then we can switch the audios. Okay. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, everybody can hear me still? Yes. Yeah. All right, great. All right, so as I said, we're, we're back to SQL Server again and we're, we're now into, we have a new database. I don't know what happened to the slide, Sorry, but... Um, we have a nice normalized structure of tables. Um, everything is in here. Um, we're going to talk about some different ways of customizing this a bit, but not really at the SQL Server level a little bit later on. Next slide. All right. So what is this all about? So this only will work for MVC. Um, you know, with web forms for marketers, you know, you had a choice at one point, but with this, you don't have no choice. You have to do MVC. Honestly, if you're not doing MVC, you really should be doing MVC by now because it's been out for a while. And eventually, I don't know when, and nobody does, Microsoft will sunset web forms. It's coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. Um, basically, you, you have to do something that was called, I think, inside out renderings that uh, Kern uh, Hirschkin came up with. I think he presented this at one point. Um, you have to do it like this so that these HTML helpers help here these method calls uh, can work and what these two different methods do one is basically going to dump out uh, css style sheets that you can set at the form level uh, within the forms content tree which we're going to show and then you can also do the same thing with javascript files as well and you're going to have multiple files and they're separated by a pipe we're going to show that very soon next slide And so here's just an example of what that would look like. So you're, you're going to have, you know, two different CSS HTML files. One's going to be like the outer layout and the other one's not the outer layout. Um, you, you have to set it up like this. And by the way, there is documentation at psycho.com that talks about this. I highly advise you to read that documentation and follow it because I didn't and I got it wrong. And then Cam Roos caught that, fixed my problem, and I was bashing my head against my keyboard for a couple hours. Anyways, please, yeah, just follow that documentation. You're going to end up with something that looks exactly like this. Um, but 
know you need it. Also, with all the field types are uh, baked into different razor views on your file system, and they all live from your website root for in this uh, folder right here. Um, you can go in and start changing markup in here, but I highly advise against that. If you want to have something that's very similar to a pre-existing field, you can just do a copy and paste job. You can duplicate an item inside of Sycor, and we're going to show an example of this. And you just have it point to your, your new razor view. That's it. Easy. So this is all nice and clean, and you know nothing's baked into C Sharp classes where you can't change anything. Next slide. One thing I love about this is everything has a pipeline. Everything. It's almost like there are pipelines that are called pipelines. Actually, that's very true here. So we have, you know, we have our standard initialized pipeline. There's a processor in there, or maybe more than one, to get this up and running. But we have a new pipeline to render the form, render all the fields, render a field, get the model for your raise view for that field, register your submit actions, also execute them. And by the way, you can execute multiple, and it's in sequence from top to bottom, and we'll get to that. And then there's a pipeline for submitting errors to show to the user. Um, you can customize this to your heart's content to do whatever you want. You, you can also kind of bake this into the native IOC container with Tycor. You could do whatever you want to meet you know, your particular needs. And we're going to hopefully show some more. Next slide. All right. We'll get into some demos. All right. Hopefully this doesn't kick me out. Okay, let's to a couple of them. All right, so we mentioned earlier that uh, it's this this leads to a small problem because when you install cycle default page is so if you try to drop a forms control on the standard standard uh, start page, so you just need to create a very simple MVC layout. Once you've done that, uh, you can go ahead and create a little sample form. Uh, <laughs> and we'll just sign his life away and there you go very, very simple straightforward form uh submits and it's gone to a i'm going to run through a few of these and then we'll uh here's a bunch of validators now again these are all uh these are all out of box fields uh we haven't done We've added, we've created a page and we've added a, a bootstrap CSS. Uh, uh, we just created a very simple page, an MVC page, and we've uh, linked to a bootstrap CSS file. So all the styling is very simple in this case, but fields that you're seeing, we haven't done. These are all out of the box fields, and we can as before drop down fields. You've got list boxes. You can select things. You've got checks check box lists, and then you've got like radio radio buttons, radio lists. Let's jump in. Check to box lists. Uh, let's jump into the back end. So off the launch pad, there's a forms uh, forms application, and then within the forms application, I've got a bunch of fields, a uh, bunch of forms that I created earlier. This is the first one we saw, the demo form. So nothing too clever going on. There's a there's a simple text uh, type field, and there's another one. One set to paragraph tag, top this set to an H1 tag. 
I've got a couple of single line text fields here. And this is an email type field. And then I've got a submit button. Which will save save the data and then redirect me to a to a thank you page. So fairly straightforward, nothing, nothing too clever going on here. E validators again. Just a straightforward set of fields in here. I've made these required by making it mandatory. And we've got a string, a string length validator here. So it's a minimum length of eight and a maximum of 255. Things like email, you've got an email type field. And there's an email validator with, with the mandatory field. In order to add fields, uh, Got this pane on the right hand side, which has a bunch of fields, a bunch of list types, some security type fields, in this case, password, and then you've got some structure sections. To add to uh, add a field to your form, you can just drag and drop to whatever you want to use. And you can also then set, uh, change the settings. So up here, example, uh, and ability control styling for, for both the field itself and the label. Earlier that this uses Bootstrap. So we, this app, the, the application here uses Bootstrap 3.2 uses, but you can use uh, whatever you like on the front end. Yeah. Oh, a bit better. Uh, the wrong way around, it is all around. You get the idea. You could you could you can make some changes on the uh, styling in your field type. Uh, hey, Kamruz, I think we have lost uh, uh, you in between. Your voice is not audible at all at the moment. Mate, can you use the uh, mic on your laptop, if possible? I can try. Just want to press your headset. Uh, yeah. Is this one any better? I just keep trying, keep talking, because it goes in and out. Well, now you're mute. Is this one better, or is this uh, still having problems with this? It seems it's better. better. Just keep talking. Keep going. All right, I'll keep going. All right. All right. So what, what did you catch up? Where did you where did you lose me last time? So you were showing the bootstrap classes on this ah, okay. All right. label. Right. Under. So okay. So so these uh, so you can you can set the uh, the CSS class for the fields and the labels individually. So let's set that to three and those changes will reflect in the application and. So it's gone from red to yellow. In terms of the field lists, um, you can hook them up. Again, you have your list type fields here 
in the uh, right hand side and drop down list you can set them you can set the uh, source of these fields to be either static or dynamic so i set this to be dynamic and then i just selected it from a list in my content tree simple as that really you can also set it to be static where you can add values yourself uh, Uh, and then when you set your fields from a data source, you can also select which field, should be, which field from those items should be used as value and which should be used as uh, for the text. These are a whole bunch of these standard values. I'm just going to add a simple main value field here. Again, you can make the you can set the validation on these, and you can set some styling as you need. Uh, one thing I do want to show you while we're here is going back into the content tree. So I mentioned that everything is an item. Uh, in the content tree, there's a new section on uh, under cycle. There's a new forms section, and within here you have your for your each of your forms. Now, when you expand these, you can just see that the items actually match what is uh, what is what you what you've actually set on your on, on your on your form. So they are quite straightforward and they are quite simple uh, to see. Take for example this fields uh, this list demo. Uh, we had a drop down, and when you go and take a look at the drop down, you can see there's a data source, which we on the right hand side, and then we'd set the display name and the value. So it's, it's, it's very, very, the structure is very, very simple. And take, for example, the, the list box that we had with the dynamic, uh, with a static data source. So we had. Um, let me save this one. If I reload this one, this was that field that we just added. And if I needed to add another one, I could, in theory, go ahead and do that. I can duplicate this. We'll now see that option has been added in that we added uh, just through the content. So this makes it very, very uh, simple, um, even with things like split actions, uh, the actions themselves are just a bunch of items in the content tree. So this, this structure is a lot, lot more simple than we had in the web forms to marketers where we had a bunch of parameters fields and these localized uh, localized parameters fields, um, and if we needed to manipulate the content or the data, then it was a lot more hard. it was a lot harder. So with something like this, if you needed to add some options or remove some options to all all your fields or some of your fields, I think it's going to be a lot lot more simple to uh, write, for example, a PowerShell script to 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 work on these types of items. We can also do some more complex layouts. Uh, I think, Mike, you've got a, a demo of this, right? Yeah, it's something very complex. Um, yeah. Ho hopefully, we yeah. can get to it. Yeah, perfect. So I'll, I'll skip through this. I think Mike's got a demo of this. But this is just using out-of-the-box controls and layouts and things. So uh, the controls, there's nothing custom here. It's just using a bunch of bootstrap classes. And again, just out of the box controls uh, with some CSS classes. We've applied these CSS classes to the to the uh, to a very straightforward uh, input box, and you know you can get the large uh, controls, the regular ones, the smaller ones. You can get these headers. Uh, just again, very very nice, very clean. I mentioned uh, multi-page demo forms earlier. Uh, so what you can do is. 
then you can actually start to start to um, fill in these forms and then you can go forward, but you can actually start to go backwards and forwards on the form. Um, you can also uh, you also have validation. So if you start to press okay, so it would just work as you would expect if you go forward, but I can't continue here because the validation is not met. So it's, it's a really neat way of uh, uh, collecting data from users without uh, forcing everything onto a single form. So with, with wizard types, uh, uh, forms are, are, are going to be, become much more useful for all of us and useful for our masters to get this, this type of data, this type of data that they want. And on the end, you can, in the end, you can <laughs> show a thank you message. So in this case, I'm, I'm I'm still on this page. If you notice, I'm I'm not on the thank you page here. So I've just used this multi-page functionality within the form to actually display a essentially a thank you message. Um, the form, as you're going backwards and forwards, is using AJAX. So it's it's partially reloading, uh, partially loading each step of the form as you're going through it, and it's not. Um, it's not a gimmick. It's not just hiding part of a form uh, using CSS, which is what we probably used to do um, because we didn't really have much option uh, before. Again, in the back end, we've got the, the structure sections over here. You've got a section, a page, and obviously the submit button. The multi-page uh, works by having pages. So you can drag and drop a page section on. That will be each page, each step of your wizard. And then in each page, you can then drag and drop a button in, which can, for example, save data. So I'm saving data along each time the user is moving backwards or forwards. And then you can add a a button and then the button has a navigation step so the options are next previous and submit so in the first one i'm going to go next and then these ones are going to be previous and then the last one is going to be submit so that the you know, it's not a submit next one is the next as well but I, I'm, I'm saving data along the way um, along each step of the way And you can also create custom submit actions. Um, let me open up. I wonder what he's signing me up for. Uh, just, just you know. <laughs> no way you can have cycle jump. Let's send you up here some money. And now, what was wrong with this one, Mike? I think we have to check uh, Slack. So, if you guys are on Slack, go into the Sitecore user groups channel and you'll see a message in there. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this custom submit action has a little web hook to kind of post into the Psycho community Slack. So we, it's just some custom code and we just tapped into the, uh, the framework in place to make this work and boom, you can, you can have a submit action send off to anywhere you want it to go, to be honest. Um, if you have a hook to send it off to some third party or whatever, you can do that. Or you can have it just go into, I don't know, I was going to touch upon this a little later, but let's say you wanted to get sent off to some other data store. You can totally do that if you'd like, but um, but there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, 
we can we can get quite we can get quite funny yeah, and we can get quite complicated with these uh, <laughs> with these with these, with these, uh, with these messages but uh, just in case you know what you put in uh, we'll, we'll leave that for uh for our friend to uh find later <laughs> and Mike's, Mike's going to show us a little bit in, on uh, Build. Yeah, I can. You want me to? You want me to take over? Sure. There you go. And um, we've got a custom field. Oh, here. actually, yeah, yeah, that thing. You know, I can find work. <laughs> yeah. So, right, totally so forgot the, about that one. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to. I mean, we can go into those bits because that was a little complicated. Um, yeah. That that's just a custom range uh, field, and there were some moving parts to it. But right, if you want to have a stab at it, you can. But um, uh, I, I I'll, have, just, I'll just put the, I'll just show the back end so that you can yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can you can you can create these uh, these fields in the back end. Um, so we created a couple. One was this raw text, which was what was used for the final step of that um, of that thank you page, just to be able to put in uh, uh, an iframe for that Giphy. And uh, then there's this range field here, and. So you can go ahead and you can you can you can add these uh, default fields, minimum values, maximum values, the steps. These are all these are all custom parts of this of this um, of this field. Uh, there's quite a few things to um, uh, hook up on this one. Uh, there's, there's quite a number of steps, but I think the, the documentation on this is again pretty good, right? So uh, oh yeah, just need to I think. I think there are two examples actually on cyberbook.com for creating fields, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah, you just need to be a little bit creative with uh, how, how you how you do your fields. Uh, that's probably probably the main the main thing. Right. So, do you want to do you want to take over the screen, Mike? And uh... yeah, I, I do want to add one thing about this though. If you're if you need to do something extremely complex where you have to add, let's say, multiple things on that right hand side, you're gonna have to have Cycro Rocks installed, and it's using Speak. So you'll have to uh, freshen up on your Speak skills in order to, in order to really uh, take advantage of all this stuff. But I'm going to show an example of something a little bit more. I I'm not going to say practical, but something you'll probably end up doing a lot more of. Um, and I don't know if I need to have full control, but let's just have a have a go with this. So. Before I jump into that, I just want to make note that there are lots of things in config for this. Uh, I, we have 255 particular things that are highlighted with experience forms. Uh, some of this is my stuff, some of it's not, but you can go in and customize lots of stuff. Also, lots of stuff is in the IOC container. Um, if you're not familiar with IOC, with Sycor's, you know, out-of-the-box IOC capabilities, you should really get familiar with it because this is where, you know, how you can go with solid principles and cleaner code, put things in the container, uh, and you can swap things out. All right. Let's have a look at something a little bit more practical. Here's a very complex form. We have a field set container. What's that all about? So... I added some custom fields here in order to structure a form that's fairly complex. And I'm not saying complex in terms of uh, things on it, but there's, there are a lot of nested things, you know, structural fields. So field set, what did I do here? This is basically just a copy and paste of the section uh, field that comes out of the box. And I did a copy and paste. I changed this from, uh, I think it was a div, to a field set. And then over inside of Cycor itself, I went to settings, forms, and then you have these field types, which is where fields are defined. And I experimented and tried to put it in a, a folder called custom and that didn't work. You have to have them live in the existing folders or it won't work. Um, I don't know why that's the case. It might be built into the speak app that's running behind the scenes, but that's how it was. So. I did a copy and paste from section to field set container. Hopefully this doesn't log me out. And I just changed the location of my razor view because I moved it somewhere else. But everything else is the same. I didn't change anything else. So I'm using 
out of the box, uh, the out of the box model type and all the other bits that go along with the section for this. And that was it. It will render a field set element. And that's a structural element where I can put other things inside of it. So if we go to the next one, I have a text inside of there. And then the next one in here, I have a span container. Likewise, I did the exact same kind of thing. I did a copy and paste job on the section and I moved the razor view out to where I want it to live. Just changed this uh, HTML to be a span and everything else is still the same. Nothing is uh, different from the section other than where I'm having the raise of viewpoint to. That's it. Now, things can get very more, a lot more complicated. So you can start adding, you know, different, let's say, different type of email fields. I'm not going to go into this, and hopefully we'll blog about this later as there's many moving parts to this. Um, it can get very complicated very fast depending on how you approach the problem. But you can have custom models, and you would just set them here. And then magically, Sycor will resolve all this stuff with all the stuff under the hood in order to get it to work. Um, one thing I would say, though, that um, I think we we're going to cover this eventually, but submit actions. So most things, as I said, are in the Sycor IOC container out of the box. One thing that is not are submit actions. So you cannot out of the box put those into the IOC container and have it magically work. Um, a lot of that's based off of there's a base class you have to inherit from to get that, that, that to work. However, my last blog post was the foundation of something that I had built to where you can inject services into submit actions and have those submit actions also live in the container as well. Uh, I also should note that that last blog post I wrote, it is the longest blog post I've ever written in my entire career. There are 303 C, C Sharp classes on it. That would also enable web forms marketers to be DI and IOC enabled using, let's say, uh, Sycor's native IOC container. Just want to throw that out there. Um, use it at your at your own risk. I'm not responsible if it does not work, it breaks, or anything goes wrong, or maybe your I don't know toaster catches on fire. It's not my problem, but just experimental, just to show you that you can do it. However, I've done it another way where instead of using 103 C sharp classes, I did it in only three. So it's definitely possible to make it a lot simpler. Just throwing that out. Um, all right, that's all I really wanted to show for that. I, I mean, I could have gone into more detail with this, but it can get very complicated very fast depending on how you're doing things. So, like, for, here's an example I created a, a custom submit action that's kind of like the save action where I, I'm injecting you know, services into a submit action. And I'm also, I also have a settings object and this represents something that I defined in config. Um, I set it up in the IOC container to be a singleton if I can find the configurator somewhere, which I can never find these things anymore. Um, I will show you the configurator in a second, but here's an example of what I was talking about to make it be DI compatible. You can set it up and have services get injected. Um, I'm not going to go into this. I'm hoping about blogging this in the future, but right now, just know that you can set all this stuff up to make it uh, go closer to cleaner code. Um, you know, from a configuration perspective, you know, you may have something that looks kind of like this. So swapping out an execute submit uh, pipeline processor under forms in order to hook all this stuff in. Then I have a settings object that gets transformed to a magical POCO object, an instance that gets injected into the submit action. Um, not gonna jump, I'm not gonna go any more into this, but just know that the capability of putting this into DI is there. And I think that's quite important. All right, uh, let's go back to the slide deck. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so I mean, I did. we did touch about submit actions. So this is what I was talking about. Here is the base class that you would typically use if you're not gonna set up the whole DI thing for this. Um, it's submit action base, and that particular type you're passing into it is a, uh, I would, you can call it, a, it could be a POCO, it could be a string. It's basically some kind of object that's represented by 
JSON that would live inside of the parameters field on, on the item that you map your submit action to under the forms tree. I know I just said a lot of stuff. But one thing to keep in mind is that if you are using string, you have to override, I believe, the try parse method, as uh, Kim just kind of pointed out to me earlier today, or it won't work. Um, if it is a POCO, it will work. You don't have to worry about that, but just keep that in mind. Here's a blog post to have a read. Uh, it's written by a Cycler MVP, and uh, I believe he is in the Netherlands. Um, have a read of this. It's a very great post. It's going to give you a great introduction, and also there is documentation at Cycler.com about this. Next slide. Validation. So, you know, a camera showed a form with, with validation on it. Um, you can create your own custom validation in here as well. Um, I haven't done this myself, but it, there is a blog post out there showing you how to do this. Definitely have a read of that. I think there's also documentation at psycho.com about this. Um, just step through it. If you need to have some custom validation, definitely do that. Just know that you have to inherit from this validation element base class. Um, and I'm assuming that type that's passed in is a similar type of thing with the try process and the submit actions. Not really sure. Definitely go have a read of that. And if you write a blog post about it, share it with the rest of the community. And maybe I'll learn something from you. Next slide. Custom fields. So I showed an example of a couple simple ones. But you can go as, as complex as you want. But here's just basic things about it. Uh, you create a, a field template, create a new class for it, raise a view, um, and then you create some uh, different. So when I talk about speak, you you know, in order to have custom, let's say, things over in the uh, details of your form in the form builder, you need to use speak for that. And then you have to create uh, the field type item. There's documentation about this. It steps you through it. It's almost like a tutorial. It actually is a tutorial. Have a read of that. Follow the directions because I, when I did it originally, I didn't, and I got things wrong. And then I looked back and said, oh, I should have followed directions as written. So just read the manual. Next slide. Encryption. So way back when, I might have been, I don't know, six, six years ago, I wrote a post on encrypting uh, form data in Web Forms Marketers and had used some encryption algorithm. <laughs> to do that and swapped out a data provider for web forms markers. I have also done that for this, just for nostalgia reasons, because I felt like, hey, that'd be kind of cool if I can actually do this here. I did that. Have a read of that post. You know, it's definitely something that's an academic in, of interest. But if you really wanted to encrypt data in SQL Server 2016, there's a tick box for that. So, I mean, why go write a bunch of code when you don't have to? Next slide. All right, so everybody's all kind of pumped up about GDPR. Well, you don't have to have a field get saved into the database if you don't want it to. So there is a tick box here, allow save, obviously, from the name, what it does. You can turn it off, and they won't save it. And But one thing to keep in mind is you will have access to the data of that field in a submit action. So let's say it's a credit card payment and like details and things like that. You can grab that and submit, submit action and send it off to a payment gateway, and you won't save it inside of your, your database. Just know that's there. It's all out of the box. You don't have to worry about it. All right. Take this this is stuff. It's, you want me to do it, or you want to do it? Yeah. You want me to do it? Yeah. All right. All right, so there are some things that are missing. There are definitely some fields missing versus web forms marketers. One thing I can remember was social security number, which shouldn't have been there to begin with. Um, there was also a credit card number field that's also not there as well. Uh, that's kind of a sensitive, touch, touchy, feely type of thing. But you know, let's say you are creating something that has to send off to your payment gateway. Think about cycle commerce. But if you don't have, have, have the need for that, you can easily create something by yourself. Uh, support for the rules engine, it's not here. I know when web forms marketers, you could have some conditional things uh, to make that work, but that's not here, unfortunately. There are also submit actions that are missing. For example, just a simple send email action. Uh, out of the box with this, you can tie in TXM, but if you just wanted to 
send a simple email through an SMTP server. You can't do that without building a custom submit action to make that work. Uh, experience editor support does not exist in this. So if you try to go and edit stuff inside of the experience editor with this, you're going to be disappointed because you can't do anything. But we have the form builders, so you can do things there. Uh, Multi-site support is not, I'm not going to say it's not supported, but I'm going to say it's a little more, more difficult. So, you know, for instance, we, as you saw in that forms tree, everything's dumped into that form parent folder. Uh, you can't kind of segregate that, you know, using the form builder to have it go into, let's say, a different tenant folder or whatever. But you can move it underneath something if you create it in the content tree, and that will work. Uh, keep in mind that this is only version one of the module, or not module, I shouldn't say that. I know I'm making the same mistake that I have made before. It's part of the product, but this is V1. Things will only get better later on, and I don't know when things are coming. There's also no workflow support for this that's out of the box. I don't believe there was anything for that for Webforce marketers either. So maybe no loss, but maybe there will be something in the future. And there is no event queue for this. I, I know that there is something for XM, and maybe one day they'll kind of incorporate it into the same kind of I don't know event queue that's there. It's like Rebus or something like that. But maybe we'll see what happens in the next version. Next slide. All right, so it's plenty of material on this. I've written a few things. You know, go have a read of those, but good luck with the last one because you might fall asleep. Uh, Rodrigo Papao, a Psycho MVP in Brazil, has written some stuff. And then we have some others below. And obviously, there's actually a lot more than this, but we only have so much real estate on one slide, so that's why we couldn't include everything. Just, you could just, you know, we have a Slack channel. It's a combo web forms for marketers and experience forms channel so you can go ask questions and people will find things and give them to you next slide you want to do this or you want me to do it yeah sure. go, you finish off all right i'll keep going all right you all right so let's say you want to migrate from workforce marketers over to experience firms well it ain't gonna happen because they're, they're two different things so why well, try to sh you know let's say shove a candle open to like a mouse hole. It ain't going to work. So it's just don't even don't even ask this question. I've seen people ask this question on Slack. Just don't even bother wasting your time. It's a brand new thing. Just rebuild everything, unfortunately. I mean, maybe unfortunately, but not because you're going to build it better next time. Next slide. All right. I know I went really quick at the last second because I wanted to leave time for questions. So does anybody have any questions? Yes, Michael, there is one question from Rakesh. He says, let's okay. say I have a multi-page uh, form and I applied save action at the last page. Uh, so what will happen to the data if user doesn't fill the complete form like he filled only the first page of the so, form and then... Um, yeah, so what actually happens is on every step, and I, we, we had something like this uh, in our examples, but we rushed through this. Uh, it will save it on every step. So it's going to save the the data from the particular page you're on. And so let's say you're on page one, it'll save that when you go to the next and then it'll save the next one and then the next one. So it's gonna, I think it keeps all that. It's gonna persist inside of the database. So you'll see like yeah. how far away somebody got. All right, and that data, is that uh, connected with the contact ID of that person? So if that person comes back, it repopulates the steps, the forms? No, no, not out of the box. Okay. You would have to do some magic to make that work. By the way, in order to get that into the experience profile, you have to build a custom submit action to make that work. And Psycho MVP, Pete Navarro wrote a blog post on that. And there's also documentation at Psycho.com talking about that. So that's how you would tie it into, let's say, market and automation in the experience profile. And um, in order to have it pre-populated from an existing, let's say, user, you'd have to build something to make that work. But good news is but, you can customize it very well, and you can make that work. Yeah, but, but also bear in mind that um, uh, it is symposium next week, right? Uh, right. Three days, three days away. So uh, there, there will be some presentations on Cycle nine point one. Uh, so I expect that there'll be it's a new release of Cycle. This is part of the platform, so there will probably be some new functionality that gets released uh, in this new uh, as, as part of this as well so i'd expect there to be some 
things, right? That are that are that I get it. That that will be that some new things are that are, that are in forms as part of that release as well. Fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> let's see what they come up with in the uh... right. So, uh, one yeah. question, uh, uh, Mike. Right? Is there any support for cross field validations, or is it custom thing which needs to be done? So if you wanted to say, hey, if they fill this out, I wanted to like validate this other field. There yes. is nothing out of the box as far as I know. I have, I mean, I don't think there is. You'd have to yeah. do some, some custom stuff for that. Um, it's doable. I mean, you can use JavaScript to do that stuff as well. And that's probably the easiest yeah. way to do that. Yeah. But if you wanted to have it handled at the server side level, that would be a little complicated. But I, I think it would be doable, but complicated. Sure. Yeah, the other server side is probably a bit trickier. Um, yeah, just because of the because normally when you're validating, you're validating each field out of time, uh, right? And you have to do one given the other. It gets a little bit more complicated in back end code, at least. Front end code is probably a bit easier. Um, right, it just depends on depends on what your requirements are. I mean, we've we've. I've done it before with like web forms for marketers. It's a lot easier because on the front end part, at least, right? Particularly with things like when it's a country and state field, like, you know, if they selected US and make the state uh, uh, mandatory. So it's easier to do on the front end. And you could almost say, well, if, if you know, it's not too much of an issue if, if, if the server side validation isn't there. So uh, right. I think it's the same, same issue here. Okay. I think I think it's doable, but it just would be very hard, to be honest. I mean, um, I remember that uh, actually a question like this came up on the community Slack maybe last week, and uh, somebody was going down a great path that looked pretty promising, but I'm not sure what ended up happening with that. Hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm, not really. I think that those were the only questions. And Do anything I, else? Uh, Playing on on the time today. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So uh, thank you, Kamruz. Thank you, Mike, for your valuable time once again today. And uh, I wish you all the best for symposium, your symposium talks. And hopefully, after symposium, we will try to arrange uh, another sessions so that you can repeat whatever you presented symposium for the community here. Yeah, and if if anybody's at symposium, definitely come find us and you know, say hello. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Thank, thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye.